So I've bought an Audi S4 and I've done so for several reasons. First up, it used to belong to a family member, so it is in a disgusting state of repair. Remember the zero given RX7? This is the zero given Audi S4. I challenge anyone to present to me an S4 in worse condition than this car. Its bodywork is ruined. Pretty much every panel's got a dent or a scratch in it. Inside, it's been lived in by two big, hairy, smelly, mostly wet dogs, and it stinks. You know what? We need a better camera car this year because the old Passat was just too slow too much of the time. The car wasn't too expensive. That's two reasons. Third reason, the S4, as you now know, is a car I've always really admired. And I quite fancy one because it's low key and yet it's very fast and compact. Fourth reason, People keep telling me that you can extract more power from these things quite easily. I haven't tuned a car since I was quite a bit younger and I quite like the idea of having something that's a bit stealthy. So I went to a place called Revo Technic and they said to me that they'd had better results with changing the software on the Audi S4 B8 model than virtually any other car they'd ever played with. So I thought, let's go along there, have them play with the software, maybe stick some brakes on it and see what we end up with. Now, what car do you match against an S4 to find out if it really is performing to a higher level? What's a higher level of S4? It's an RS4. So I thought we'd go and find out how a Revo software mapped S4 performed against an Audi RS4. What I have here is the quite beautiful looking new B8 RS4. 450 horsepower from a normally aspirated V8 engine, four wheel drive with launch control and I'm looking at two miles of Brunting Thorpe straight ahead of me. To my right is my raggedy old Series 1 B8 Audi S4 supercharged 3 litre V6 and it's got a standard engine in it at the moment. I say at the moment. That has 333 horsepower so we've got a big advantage here and that doesn't have any launch control. Neil now, hopefully, will set us on our way. And it's an annihilation at the moment. We've crucified him off the line and now we're just, well, we're just edging ahead. What's the gap? I don't know, I'm looking in my mirror. 15, well, 10 car lengths, 15 car lengths, I mean, just a long, long way behind. We're now pulling 147, 149, 150, 154, 156, 160, still going, where's the limiter? 163, 164, 65, there's no limiter, 167. Okay, I think we can safely say that that was an annihilation. It's a different league of speed. But, when we go back to the pit area, there's a man called Kevin who's going to plug his widget, or his dongle, or whatever he calls it, into the ECU of the S4 and make it perform a little bit differently. And then we'll have another race. Quite looking forward to this. Look what it takes to make a B8 S4 go from 333 horsepower to, let's say, something beginning with a four. Watch this, it'll blow your mind. Kev, show me. Ignition on. Switch into performance mode with your SPS. Make a beep. Find the diagnostic port. <laughs> the bleep indicates that we're switched to performance mode. And that's it. Engine uh, uh, on, off we go. So, 30, 40 years ago, you did cams, you did pistons, you did intake, you did exhaust. Now, you, well, give me that, please. Look at that. Isn't that extraordinary? Right, so, will the old dog snotter now match an RS4? We shall go and find out. Seconds out, round two. I have 450 horsepower in my RS4. It hasn't changed. However, the S4 now has a bit more horsepower. I don't know what the dyno figures are, but I'm led to believe it might have something in the region of 400 horsepower and a lot of torque. So let's see what happens. There he goes! 
I mean, off the line, it's almost identical. I gave him as much as I could because I've got launch control, but look at this now. We're just level pegging. Okay, I've got a little bit of a march on in there, but it's tiny. I mean, we're just pegging each other. Can you see him? Okay, maybe I've taken a yard out of him there. A yard? You see the bonnet popping up on the old girl a bit. Maybe two yards. That really is it. 166 miles an hour. Hundred and sixty six miles an hour. And there was I reckon there were what? Two, three yards in it by the end? It's a nap extraordinary. I'm a little bit speechless. So to recap, the three litre supercharged Audi engine is something else. It really does offer huge scope for tunability. So we've taken a very ordinary Audi S4, done a bit of software to it, and we've ended up with a car that is absolutely as quick as the brand new RS4. Does that take anything away from the RS4? Well, I suppose in some ways it does, because a halo product, an absolute you know, alpha male like the RS4, shouldn't really have any competition from within its own model range, but it's the beauty of forced induction, isn't it? You'll never get round it. This razor sharp 8,400 RPM V8 that makes those lovely noises, it's an amazing engine, but it it restricts anyone messing around with it afterwards. There's not so much you can do with it. However, when you start playing with supercharged engines, there's a suspicion that Audi have held that thing back anyway to give it a gap between the S4 and the RS4. Once these clever blokes start messing around with laptops and working out how they can make them boost better and do other things, I don't know, it's all black magic to me. They can make them perform, can't they? So that car now owes me less than 20,000 pounds and we'll do 0 to 100 miles an hour in 9.4 seconds and we'll match an RS4. I think that's quite an impressive little estate car. We had a new toy to play with for the timed runs as clever bods at Race Logic have created the V-Box Sport, which is a water and bash proof sensor that clips to your windscreen and is Bluetooth connected to an app on your iPhone. Very cool and very convenient. The RS4's launch control is subtle. It slightly rides the clutch, then you feel a little slip from the rear wheels, and then it just bolts away. Gear shifts from the dual clutch box are imperceptible, and the numbers are impressive. 0 to 30 takes just 1.67 seconds, 60 takes 4.12 seconds, and the 0 to 100 time is a sharp 9.42 seconds. The NFG S4 has no launch control, it's an early car. You just mash the right pedal and hope the smell of wet dog will disappear. The gearbox is far less crisp as well. First to second is noticeably slower than in the RS4, but from then on it rips down the runway in a way that must make it the smallest state car bargain of the year. Get this! 0 to 30 in 1.73 seconds, 60 in 4.17 seconds, and 100 in 9.48 seconds. Just six one hundredths of a second slower than the RS4 to 100 miles an hour. With the standard software, just to show you, the S4 ran 60 in 4.7 seconds and 100 in 11.3 seconds. Still impressive, but miles off the Revo adjusted version. How much power does it have? I don't really care actually, so long as it does the numbers on the flat, but it must have well over 400 horsepower now. With so much extra poke, we're trying some Stasis 370mm front brakes with six piston calipers. They fit behind the standard rims and are miles better than the stock S4 brakes. The only other mods are a thicker rear anti-roll bar and an optional exhaust which sounds a little fruitier and ditches the slightly pathetic S4 tailpipes. It's a bit shiny right now, but the strict no washing regime will soon fix that. Here's a breakdown of the costs. Now I need to be absolutely clear. This exercise is about showing just what you can squeeze from an S4 with very little work. It's not about belittling the RS4. Of course, 
in comparing it to the RS4, I'm naturally slightly exposing some of its performance, let's say, deficit compared to the, the car that's lower down in the range. But I'm not trying to take the mickey out of the RS4 for the simple reason that the RS4 is a lovely car, but by heck is it a confusing car. Neil and I have spent several days in this thing now, and it really is like the sort of beautiful boyfriend-girlfriend situation that isn't actually all the personality you might want it to be. On the road, the steering can be really odd, the dynamic steering. The chassis, when it's in comfort mode, it's a bit loose and doesn't ride that well. When you put it in dynamic mode, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, you just simply can't drive it, it's so firm. The engine's so exciting and wants to rev, and yet it doesn't have anything like as much torque as the, the S4, and you have to really be up it the whole time. But this is the big problem with the RS4. Every time you see it, you completely fall in love with it because it's so good looking. And as an object, it's just gorgeous. The interior is beautiful. It's a car that I'd love to have outside my door all year long, but probably for all the wrong reasons. And of course, anyone looking to spend between 60 and 70 thousand pounds on a new small estate car isn't looking to go and buy a used S4 and chip it up and do the things that I've done. So there isn't really a comparison there at all. The RS4 really is a flawed diamond, but it proves that these Audi RS products are very hit and miss. We're gonna drive an R8 V10 soon, and that's a bit of kit. The RS4, I think, is in many ways quite a compromised driving machine, but a beautiful object.